All right, folks, it is good to be back. Uh, I think we're on session eight or nine. I need to recount, but uh, we're going to continue down this path of talking about kind of three main pillars again. We have the AI uh, sections we've covered, and I'll talk about those again in case you missed them. Uh, we have the communication, which we just wrapped up last week, Azure Communication Services. And now we're going to switch our focus to what are some of the things you could do to uh, prevent people like me from going to look for something in Outlook, uh, OneDrive, uh, some other location. You know, I need a document. I need a chat in Teams. I need something like that. And then if you're like me, you go down that rabbit hole and, you know, 20 minutes later, you come back up some sometimes and you go, oh, my gosh, I didn't even get what I was looking for because you got distracted, Right. And, you know, that's pretty common because we're all doing so many things and, you know, we try not to multitask because that's not super efficient, it turns out, but we do. So what we're going to talk about now is how can we actually uh, get started bringing organizational data into apps? Now, you're all familiar and have heard of, I suspect, or at least most of you, Microsoft Graph. That's what we're going to be talking about a lot. But we're going to talk about some new things that you may or may not have seen that are in something called the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. Now, today's goal is really just to focus on how do you get started with this. I know a lot of you have seen what I'm going to show you here, but be sympathetic and empathetic to those who are new to this and you know they want to learn how to do it too. So we're going to go through uh, the artist formerly known as Azure Active Directory, now Microsoft Intra ID, and how you can get started there. But before I go too much further, let's review what we're kind of going through in this app. So first off, we started off with these sessions on assisting users with AI. And this was all about adding creativity, productivity, those type of Ivity words, I guess you could say, uh, into your applications. And uh, these are all recorded. So if you're interested, you can go to the playlist uh, up on the YouTube channel and you can get this type of information. From there, we went into the communication features. We just wrapped up email and SMS sending last week, but we also talked about things like how you could add phone calling right into an app. Again, to avoid that context shift and that you know, wasting time that we all do because we have to jump to some other app or in this case, you know, pick up a phone. Now we're going to go into this, bring organizational data into apps. And we're going to start off with the beginning, which is creating the uh, app registration. But from there, we're going to talk about uh, some different features that you can either write code for or you could use web components for. Uh, you're going to see the web component route is a lot less code, and I'll get to that in the next few sessions over the next uh, three or so weeks here. So let's jump into the demo again for those that are maybe here and have not seen this. This is all based on a tutorial that you can get to today. I'll have a link for this at the end. Um, you can either scan it or go to the link. But the app itself is just a really simple line of business app. And those that have been here all eight times, you're like, OK, Dan, thank you so much. We've seen it eight times. Again, I know there's probably some folks that are maybe seeing this for the first time, though. So a couple of things you can do in this app. It has natural language to SQL. We talked about that because there's a lot of caveats you should worry about there. Uh, we talked about uh, when it comes to open AI, how you could you know, generate and help uh, order is delayed two days, um, you know, Right, like Shakespeare, shake, how you spell Shakespeare, Shakespeare, or something like that. Um, and then have it generate emails and SMSs, and then you can send this. And um, actually, that's not as good of Shakespeare as normally. But anyway, we'd have to play with that prompt a little more today, anyway. Last time it was pretty good. Um, and then we could send SMS, we could send email, those type of things. And then we also talked about things like phone calling. You could actually call directly, and if I, right now, my number's still hard-coded here, so we could call it. But the order of today and then the three sessions that are going to follow is this. You'll notice we have this view-related content. So imagine for a moment, put, your, uh, put yourself in place of the user, and they're working with a form, a data grid. And that's why I did a data grid, because a lot of us have data grids or some other aspect of your system where they need to go get additional information on occasion. They need to go find that document that's related, that email, that Teams chat, 
uh, that whatever it is that's in Microsoft 365 that they've worked with. So if I click on, for instance, a datum corporation here, what this is gonna do is use some of these different components we're gonna talk about to actually go out and say, okay, for a datum corporation, what do we have in the way of files that this user, this is specific to the user, uh, has created or worked with? And this goes to OneDrive for Business. Uh, what Teams chats do they have about this customer? None in this case, but I'll have some others I'll show you. What emails? And these are all made up email, of course. What calendar events? And you can see they've had a couple calendar events with them. Now let's go down to maybe Tailwind Traders because they have a little more data. And you'll notice they also have some documents here and we can click on these to get information. And then we could also go and click on these to go to the Teams chats. Um, and that way I, as the user, am not having to jump to Teams or Outlook or OneDrive or whatever it is. I can actually bring that all in and just have it right there for the user so much easier. And then of course they can even search, you know, if I type Tailwind Traders 2, it's not gonna find anything because there isn't one, um, but you could do keyword search and things like that. So how do you kind of integrate all this together? Well, those that have done some Microsoft Graph, you know the answer here, but for those that haven't, we can leverage the APIs that are out there in Microsoft 365 through Microsoft Graph. And we could either A, write all this by hand, or B, we could use web components. Now this app actually has both ways, and we're gonna talk about that over the next three weeks that are coming up. Um, the focus is gonna be on all of these were actually rendered using web components from Microsoft Graph Toolkit. And there's some new functionality that some of you probably haven't seen that we're gonna talk about uh, that is in here. So that's kind of the agenda of what we're after. Now, before you can even do that though, this app needs to be part of what we call an app registration. Because you'll notice I'm logged in, I have my developer tenant here, um, which if you are new to this, you can get a free developer tenant and get all your Microsoft 365 environment set up. Highly encourage you to set one of those up. I use it all the time uh, for not only demos, but just trying out things as well. So the first thing we would have to do though, is we would need to come into either the Azure portal or use the Azure CLI and come into the artist, artist formerly known as Azure Active Directory or Microsoft Intra ID now. And we'd have to set up what's called an app registration. You'll see that on the left. Let me, I can probably zoom that one more. And let's go into this guy. Now you're gonna notice I have quite a few app registrations. This particular tenant right here um, has a lot of demo things in it. So most of this is just demo. This uh, Angular MGT here, that is the sample app actually, that's what I'm using. But we would go in and create a new registration, give it a name, and then we would need to choose who, what type of accounts are allowed to get to this. Uh, is it okay if it's accounts in any organizational directory, any tenant? Um, is it, can it include things like Skype and Xbox? Um, or is it just locked down to one, this one tenant? So you need to kind of choose uh, what you want to do there. Really depends on your company and how you set things up, okay? But the tutorial will walk you through this and discuss a little more of these options if you want to go through that. Now, from there, a really, really important part of this, and this is where when I first got started with this, I struggled a little bit, was the platform. You know, what am I building here? Because you saw this is a web app, right? It's a web app but it's actually something I'm gonna be calling from the front end. So I selected a single page application. And then for development purposes, you could go in, well, if you have HTTPS for a development, great, but normally you'll have like localhost, some port, right? So localhost 3000 maybe, uh, if you're doing you know some of those different front end type projects, or for this one, it'd be 4200. Um, and you would put that in, now the service tree, I'm not gonna go into because that's optional, but you would just register that. Now, once you register it, if I go back to here, remember I have all these and some of these are really kind of old, I'm not really using them. So I'm gonna go to this one because I don't really care if you see some of the stuff here. Well, okay, I have my filter on, but you'll notice that there's an app ID, an object ID and a tenant ID or director ID. All right, two of these I'm gonna be using and I'll show you that 
and how they're being used in just a moment. But once you set this app up, you're gonna get these IDs that you can use. Now, again, you gurus out there that are already doing this every day, you're used to this, but um, I'm assuming some of you probably haven't done this quite as much. But that's what I did first to get this application where I could actually uh, do something with it. Now, there's a little more to the story. I won't have time to go through everything. You'll notice, for instance, um, over here, you can go into permissions. And I do want to just mention really quickly, this is where if you want to pre-add, for instance, some Microsoft Graph permissions or scopes, you'll see, um, you kind of have a choice here. Do you want your application um, to access the API as the user? So in other words, the user signed in and then it delegates as the user. Or do you want the application, this could be, for instance, an API. Uh, this was something we did uh, a series of sessions on audio video communication into Teams meetings. And that was one where a backend API was used to make the graph calls. Well, in that case, we set up app permissions. OK, um, because we weren't flowing the user permission all the way through to the API. They had to log in. They had to validate with the API, but then we let the API take over from there. So it just kind of depends on what you're doing. But in this case, this is an app that is delegated, meaning that when the user logs in, we're only going to be able to get to the stuff that is for this one user, whereas the other option we could, of course, get to more potentially. OK, this is the one I tend to go with because I prefer least privilege uh, where possible. But now we can come in and here's an example. There's email. So I could say, yeah, email. Um, I want to get to the user's profile. You'll notice that right up top. I can get to some profile information here. This is just my fake stuff, but still. All right. So once you do that, that could set it up in advance. Now, I'm going to show you, though, for this app, we're actually doing it a little bit differently. Um, and I'll get to that code here now that we've seen this. So if you, again, go through the tutorial, if you're new to this, it'll walk you through this, what you need to set up. It's not hard. It's just a matter of spending a little bit of time going through the steps. OK, so now that we've seen that, let's turn our focus to, all right, how do we actually use this? Well, first off, if I go into my package JSON here, you're going to notice that I have this Microsoft MGT, OK? And there's even a newer version of this. I need to probably update it at some point. Um, but this is what I'm going to be using behind the scenes to actually make these calls that we're going to do. However, I'm also going to show you that we could actually use 100% code to do this if we want. We'll get into that again in the next three weeks. For today, though, we have this service. This is a reusable front end service. Think of it just as a file that can do some of these graph calls. That's the name, graph service TS. And you're gonna notice that if we don't have this thing called a global provider configured, we're gonna configure it. Now, what is this providers thing? Well, let's go up uh, top here. There's that Microsoft MGT, that's Microsoft Graph Toolkit again. And then you're going to notice we have this MCL2 provider, providers, provider state, some of these symbols that we're importing up top. Well, what we're doing here is I'm saying, has this already been set up? If it hasn't, I'm going to log out because this is a demo app, you know, initializing. And then we're going to say, let's set up a global provider. Now it's global to this app. Okay. And what we're going to do is feed into this uh, Microsoft Authentication Library, MCL. Uh, provider, we're going to feed some data from that Azure portal. So we're going to feed the client ID and we're going to feed the scopes. Now, there will be some scopes that you'll have to go in and add uh, as appropriate because they might need even more permissions. I'm not going to go into that right now, but notice we're going to get things like, yeah, I want to be able to read the user uh, information. I want to get their presence not really using that, but that's where if we go here and you'll notice here, you can't really see anything, but I could add a little bit of extra work to say, I don't know, put a maybe a green circle around this person if they're available or a red circle around them if they're uh, in a meeting, something like that. That would be presence. Uh, we're going to get to chats, calendars, channel messages, uh, files, mail, you know, all that fun stuff. So we're going to set that up. 
And that is the magic to get us to what we're going to cover. And I'm going to give you a sneak peek here of what we're going to cover uh, coming up here. So remember that we could get to things like files, right? There's a couple of ways we could do that. Now that the provider is set up and it knows about the app registration, you notice I'm getting these from environment variables here um, that are passed in during the build process. They're not passed in live because uh, some of this stuff you would only want for the build. But notice we go down to search files. I actually have some code here to make calls out using that global provider. Okay, and notice I can say graph, client, API, and I want to go to the search APIs. But I want to search specifically for this type of information, drive items. And then the filtering I'm going to do is a datum corporation or tailwind traders or name of a person, you know, whatever the query is goes here. And then I'm looking specifically for documents. Okay. Now, from there, I'd have to do a little bit of work to iterate through the results and do all that. But here's what we're going to start covering next week. You could do all that, or you could just do that right there and be done with it. That is actually what's being used to render this and most of these. Some of these, I do have to use code to go get the data. Um, but this right here, this is actually being rendered just with this little bit of, oops, wrong way. This little bit of code right here, MGT search results. So if you haven't heard about this, we're going to talk about it uh, starting next week. This is a very new MGT component. I love it because you see all this code down here? Do, 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 do. Quite a bit of code, right? I don't need most of that now. I can, yeah, I can write it uh, what we'd call declaratively or imperatively. This is imperative code where you're writing everything. This would be more declarative code, way easier to work with. And I'll talk about how you can work with this again next week, because there are some things I want to point out you can do. So that's what we're going to get into. But that introduces, and I'm at the end of time here. So that introduces uh, kind of how we're starting to pull that data in. I would wrap up by saying, if you're not currently thinking about pulling this type of data in, it's a good time to think about it because we're already distracted enough, right? So why not bring the data the users need right to the users in the app and you can build a reusable component and make this available in all your apps potentially. So with that, uh, let me go to the last little part and I'll turn it back over to Vasic because I am out of time. Um, but if you scan this code or go to this URL, you can get to the tutorial that'll walk you through this. Uh, real quick uh, pumping of an event tomorrow. If you're interested in GitHub Copilot, we're gonna be doing a Copilot adventure stream with VS Code. We just did one with Visual Studio yesterday, but uh, to, uh, tomorrow's will be with VS Code. Go check that out if you're interested, lots of good stuff. So with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Vesa. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you.